So before we start plotting, I just wanted to quickly go over some background of ggplot, where it came from, and some of the basic elements that you need to know in order to get started. So the gg in ggplot2 builds on this system or the grammar of graphics developed by this guy called Wickham. And this grammar of graphics allows for a higher level plotting system compared to base R functions like plot and hist. It allows us to make much more complicated plots and really good looking visualizations without the use of too much code. Now don't get me wrong, there's definitely code involved, but using ggplot reduces the amount of code substantially. And importantly for presenting data to, I suppose, statistically naive individuals, you can integrate statistical information within these plots. So no numbers, just visualizations, which is a really useful tool. So the graphics are built on an underlying grammar, and this grammar can be thought of as a system of rules for managing variables to graphical properties. Now there's two main principles involved here. There are the ingredients, which consist of distinct layers of grammatical elements, such as data, aesthetics, and geometries. And then there is the recipe, which is how you put together all these elements in a specific way to get the exact type of plot that you want. And just to focus a little bit more on the graphical elements, there are three main elements that you need to know. And once you know them, you can start building up your knowledge and iteratively expanding what you're doing with ggplot2. This is the starting point, but it's an important starting point. The first is the data element, and this is the data frame you're using and the variables within that data frame that you want to plot. Next is the aesthetics, which is mapping between the data and graphic properties, including the axis, the size, and the color of your plots. Lastly, there's the geometries, which is the visual elements encoding the data. So are you using points, circles, squares, diamonds, numbers, letters, polygons, those are all indicated as a geometry using the geom underscore function. So now that you're aware of these elements, let's try and apply them and create some graphs. All right, so to start off with, we're gonna need to activate, or if you haven't activated, install ggplot2. If you haven't installed it, just go to packages, install, type in ggplot2 and install it. But I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to highlight this library, ggplot2, and run it. Right, and this one you may, this one more of you may need to install. And this is called hrbr themes. And this is essentially a theme for ggplot that takes away some of the work that we need to do. And I'm going to run that as well. Okay. Next, I'm just going to copy some code that I've made earlier and create a data frame. This data frame is called data and has two conditions, each with n equals 50 data points, which are all normally distributed, but with slightly standard deviations. All right, so I got my data points or my, my data data frame. If you wanted to view it, we can type view with a big V, capital V, not a small V, parentheses data. Data is my data frame name, not just data in general. We can view that. So we have two conditions, condition one and condition two, with a, an x-axis score and a y-axis score, purely for the purposes of this ex example. All right, so we got our data we got our ggplot activated. Now we can begin to start plotting. So first I want to, I'm going to call the first plot that we're going to do P1, plot one. And then I'm going to assign this P1 value to a ggplot with data as my data name. You can have data equals or you can just put the data frame directly. I just use data frame directly comma and now we're going to set the aesthetic x equals my x because that is my independent my independent variable and y 
y equals my y, right? So here's essentially all the ingredients that we need to inform ggplotl. We have our data, we have our aesthetics, and we have our variables, right? So if we ran just this plot, hang on, I think I unselected that. Right, so if we ran just this plot, we would get a blank sheet, right? We have a y-axis and we have an x-axis, but we don't have any points because we've missed out on the geometries. So if we were to add a, a plus at the end of our ingredients line, push enter and then type geom underscore, and you can see there's a whole lot of different possibilities that we can use there. But for the purpose of this example, I'm just gonna be focusing on the, the point geometry, right? And if we put a, an empty parentheses, and then we ran that again, not including the P1, just the GG plot. You would see that we now have elements. We now have geometrical elements within our plot. And we're able to edit these somewhat customizably. For instance, if I were to put size equal four, I want to increase the size of these points. And I wanted the color of these points to be pink. I'm able to do that. Now let's try it again. Get my big pink points. Nope, not control shift, control enter. Right, there you go. And you can see that we have a reasonably pink graph. And we can also add a specific theme. Now because we installed the HRBR themes earlier, we are, have access to a theme called Ipsum which is Latin for precise. And I quite like the way it looks. So instead of us having to determine what the background is gonna be in the shades of transparency, theme ipsum will do it for us. So we can highlight that, control enter. And you can see now we have no gray background and we have grids. So making progress, it's looking all right. Don't worry about those errors, it just says I don't have a font but that's neither here nor there. All right, so let's say we, I said we could add statistical elements into our data, right? So this is a pretty linear relationship. So why not add a linear line, a line of best fit? And we can do that. So let's copy our code here and make this the second graph. And we wanna add another geometry. We wanna make this smooth and linear. So let's do that. Geom smooth, open parentheses, and here we want to have a method equals lm. So that means we want a linear model. So we want to see what the linear relationship is between variable x and variable y. And we can also determine what color this line of best fit is going to be. So color equals, what should we make it? Blue. Why not? And then remember to add the plus at the end so our theme is still included in the overall code. And then we can run that. And there we go. We have our line and I forgot that we can determine whether we want the confidence intervals on or off. So by doing that we can type next to the color blue, we can say SE equals false if we do want that confidence interval. Running that, it's gone. But if we make SE equals true or just leave it as default, we can also determine what color we want that confidence range to be by typing full equals, I don't know, a green, why not? running all that and there we go we have a, a very ugly looking graph I did say ggplot is meant to make pretty visualizations but it's, it's up to the user we have our point geom points representing the data points we have our lm smooth line of best fit with our green 95 percent confidence intervals now you say what shall we do about these axes they they're not great and and I agree with you, they're not great. 
we can sort it out though. So if we add a, a plus again, you need to add a plus sign when you're adding a new line, otherwise it won't get incorporated into the, the, the code for the plot. We want a GG title, right? And we want our GG title to be a linear graph. And then we also want to have a, a Y label labeled as Y lab. And this can be a magnificent Y, I don't know why I added a comma there, a magnificent Y variable. And don't forget to add the plus. We can do the same for the X axis known as the X lab, lab for label. X lab is in quotation marks a terrible x axis and then you can run all this code and push enter no nope. I keep doing that control enter not shift enter and there we go we have our title a linear graph our x label our x axis a terrible x axis and our y axis a magnificent Y variable presented on our plot. Now you ask, they're not aligned. They're not aligned, you're absolutely right. And we can also sort that out, right? So in order to edit the, the justification and the positioning, as well as the color and the font size of the axes, we just need to add a specific theme. So we've saved our ggplot to the function of P2. So P2, if we type it, would just bring up our plot. And if it wasn't there already, you would see it now. And then we're going to add a theme. So plus theme. Then there's, we can type plot title equals element text. Open brackets, color equals red. So if we ran that code, then our title changed to red. We can also do the horizontal justification. So where is it? If it's, if it's more towards left, towards the right, default towards left, we can put in the middle. So H just equals 0.5. And there we go. Now it's in the center. And we can also make it bold if we wanted to. So, no, got to be in the aesthetic. I don't know what's going on. Comma, and we can make it face equals bold. And now it should be a big, bold, linear graph. No, yes, no, there it is. I suppose you can't really tell the difference too much in that case. And then we can also, if we wanted to add Add it for the x-axis and the y-axis. Personally, I don't like them being in the corners, but some people do. So I'm going to add a comma here and get that there. And then we delete that double bracket and have the double bracket closing at the end of the code. And we run that. And now we have a red bolded title, a nicely placed magnificent y variable and a centeredly justified terrible x-axis. So now you should be able to adjust your line graph as much as you wanted to. If it was helpful, maybe drop a like, consider subscribing, and um, stay tuned for more GG Plot videos. Thanks for watching.